So we're back, Larissa Heaven's Archaeologist and Cassandra Cutlist. And this work is new to a lot of people. Cuddle list and cuddle party. Some people will come up to you and tell you how much they love cuddles, they wish they had it in their life, they're so lonely, and you're like, I know how to help you with that. But maybe they've only ever heard of people cuddling with their family or in a romantic relationship. And so the idea that you can go to someone and pay for it is so foreign. And they might even think, well, I don't want to pay for that, like, for, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. So how, you know, without trying to sell anyone on it, how do we, how do yeah. we handle that? One of the ways that I explain it, or just try to put it in a different light, is we have come to a place in our culture right now where most of us are like, oh, you've got a therapist? It's not a weird thing. Like to have a talk therapist, we don't say, why don't you just go to your friends? Why don't you just talk to your family? Like we've got this like, oh, you have somebody dedicated to talk to you who's got training, who can just really make it about you and, and be a safe person to listen to. Similarly, with a massage therapist, we're not like, why are you going to massage therapist? Why don't you just have your friend rub your shoulders? Or like, oh, are you getting sex there? Like we don't confuse that either. And I think cuddling, professional cuddling is just at a younger stage in its industry. But making the analogy to talk therapy and to massage therapy, I'm like, it's cuddle therapy. And we have training in how to keep the, the boundaries and the consent and make it a good experience. And it's clearly for you. What you are paying for is my dedicated time and attention. And that is worthwhile. So how does that land in you? That makes so much sense. And you know, I have been focused a lot on Cuddle Party in the last however long. And it's different because when you're at a Cuddle Party, you can ask someone for something and they might be willing to, but they're probably not going to give you an hour of their dedicated time where you are either the receiver or it's all about what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get 10, 15 minutes of that where they might give you a massage or something or you could ask for something, but it also would seem equitable that you offer them something or they ask for something too. So it's kind of like a more of an exchange and maybe they've got great touch, but you know, it's different, you know, just like a non-trained person can sometimes give a great massage too. But also if someone is concerned about finances, that is, you know, often a more affordable option. Mm -hmm. And then you have a variety of people to cuddle with. And, and there's still rules and boundaries that help keep it really clear. Um, so many of us who appreciate the professional cuddle world or the cuddle party world, like part of what we appreciate is that it's very, very clear. There are boundaries. There is a container. There is a, and within that container, it's like the sky's the limit. It's like, you, you know, this one, the study of uh, the kids at a playground. And when there was a fence around the playground, the kids were more open to explore and to play bigger games and to go near the fence. But when there was a playground with no fence, the kids stayed closer to the middle and were more shy and cautious around the edges because they weren't sure where the boundaries were and where they were safe. So I think likewise, we get to know ourselves and our wants and our desires and how we touch and how we like to receive touch better for knowing where those boundaries are. It's not going to be a sexual encounter. It's not going to be a romantic relationship. I love the boundaries. I mean, that that's why I'm able to cuddle with people that I just met and why, yeah, if you walk into it in the middle, it's it may seem peculiar, but you don't walk into the middle without having gone through the welcome circle first. Right. And I guess I kind of think of it maybe like having a personal trainer versus going to a gym class. Like, you know, in a gym class, it might be the personal trainer running the gym class, but they're not going to have 100% of the attention on you. They might notice, okay, you need to squat deeper or the, the, they might give you some feedback but it's it's going to be spread out throughout the group whereas a personal trainer it's going to cost more and then they are dedicated to watching you the whole time and motivating you the whole time etc so mm -hmm. that's another good analogy uh, between like the gym class is like the cuddle party and the personal trainer is like the cuddlest session exactly so yeah. it's not like analogous things don't exist in our culture it's just that this is a peculiar thing for some people who haven't heard of it yet, but sometimes after they hear about it, then they become big fans and say, I needed this my whole life. <laughs> Yay, so share this video with your friends. Indeed. And then reach out to Larissa and reach out to Cassandra. 
and, and get your cuddle on. Get your cuddle on. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.